Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and those who are excited about Bible study. I am the minister of North Shore Church of Christ, Terry Atwater. I have been the minister here for some 45 years, uh, trying to uh, share with people what thus saith the Lord from the greatest book in the world. It is the Biblos or the Bible. The Bible is a book, as I've said on time and time again, it is a book that tells us how to live, it tells us how to die, and it tells us about the hereafter. It is the only book that has stood the test of, of time, and as uh, God sa has said, that uh, heaven and earth shall, in fact, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, uh, but my word shall never pass away. It's good to stand on peace, it's good to stand on faith, it's good to stand on love, but the most important thing is to stand on the Word. Right now, as we enter into this, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate those who regularly uh, tune in with us for these classes in the Bible. And uh, we do our best to leave out my personal opinion and my philosophy and, and share with you what the Lord would have us to know. And if we know what the Lord would have us to know, we'll please him. And then he has a final reward, a place that is called heaven, that he called heaven. And he also indicated that he would come again and receive us unto himself, that where he is, we may be there also. And while we're here on this earth, we're going to have all kinds of trouble, trauma, and uh, tragedy. As our beloved nation, again, we've had a massacre. Uh, as uh, youngsters have been shot brutally in the setting of an educational system. And uh, I will say more of this about this a little bit later. Uh, certainly, I want to invite all of you to come and be with us uh, every Lord's Day, which is Sunday. We start at 9 a.m. and you can be edified up until noon with all of with the classes, our worship services, etc. And then on Wednesdays we have a live Bible class at 6.30 and of course 9.30 in the morning. And we encourage you to participate, feel welcome when you come among us and we'll certainly treat you with all of the love that one can receive. For those who might be working on your sobriety and uh, you're trying to uh, unleash the stronghold of, uh, of, of alcohol and drugs and those kind of things. We have the NA programs, uh, the Narcotics Anonymous, which meets on uh, Friday, uh, Friday evenings at 7, uh, on Sundays at evening at 7 p.m., and then on uh, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And you, I would encourage you to come because as you empty yourself of the evil of those drugs, you need to refill yourself with the Spirit of God. And when you refill yourself with the Spirit, then you can maintain your sobriety. We love you so much. Now we have a class on tonight. Our nation is, is, is mourning over uh, the massacre and the killing and, and the proliferation of uh, firearms that no one should have. We, 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 we need to... We need to uh, reduce the guns and increase God. That's what we need to do. We need more Jesus and, and, and less of the stuff that people use to kill one another. Now, I want you to understand something clearly. You have the privilege of uh, owning a firearm. The, qu the question is, is how you use that firearm. Now, if you are a woodsman or a hunter, uh, that's one thing, but you don't need an AK-47 or AK-15 or AR-15 or whatever in order to go hunting. If you need that to go hunting, then you are not a hunter. You are just a killer. A hunter, all he needs really is a bow and arrow or uh, maybe a, a 22 single shot. That's all he really needs if he's going to go uh, hunting or maybe an, uh, a shotgun, but that's all he needs. He doesn't need, he doesn't need a hundred rounds set up with uh, 
protective body with, with body protection and uh, mylar helmets and all of that. Uh, when somebody has all of that, that means they are, do, they are about evil, doing wrong. Uh, we, are, we are starting, we, we've used the excuse of, uh, you know, when, some, when we have these massacres, there's a phrase we use that it says, uh, uh, you know, I give you my prayer and my thought. Let's stop using that. Let's stop using that. See, praying and thought is worthless if you don't do anything about it. You see, all we have to do is just go vote and vote out that Senate that continues to uh, downplay and not consider uh, reasonable uh, laws that will help us to maintain our situation. We, we are the worst country in the world. There is no other country that has had the killings in schools and shopping centers and churches like the United States of America. I don't care what party, whether you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent, it should not happen in our nation. And those of you who go to various religious institutions uh, and, and, and uh, you, you go in there sanctimonious and you come out, uh, you come out uh, uh, like you are a, a student of Satan <clears throat> with, with the attitudes that we have. So I want to encourage you uh, to understand the need that we have to take on the principles of Jesus. Uh, if we take on his principles. So that's why my lesson for tonight is that uh, Jesus is not any shepherd. He's not any shepherd. You know, there are a lot of people that claim to be shepherds, but Jesus is not just any shepherd. Uh, in fact, Jesus said something uh, that uh, I'm just going to pick off the top of my head and share with you over in the book of Mark. Now, I want you to get your pencil and your paper and write these things down because some of the scriptures that I use may not necessarily be uh, displayed in our media system, uh, but you can just write them down as we, as we, as we go through. But it comes to mind, Jesus said something in, in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 8. <clears throat> Uh, he, he said, uh, uh, as he was talking with his disciples, he said in verse 17, now you might write this down, Mark 8 and 17, just put that down in your notes so you can have it, 17 and 18. But he said, uh, why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Let me, let me share this with you. He, he's asking this question because he's in the process of feeding the 4,000 people. You know, on one occasion he fed 5,000, and on another occasion he, he fed the 4,000. And, of course, they, the disciples had forgotten to take bread and all of that, and they're wondering where we're going to get provisions to feed all of these people, and the Lord has to, has to get on their cases and tell them, look, 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 have you forgotten? Don't you understand? First of all, don't you understand who I am and, and, and what the possibilities are? You know, I, you know I, I, I can turn impossibilities into possibilities. See, you, you talk about faith. See, faith is not something uh, that is passive. Faith is active. Faith without works is dead. And Jesus didn't know he went on to say, and this is the verse I really want in verse 18, where he says, having eyes... See ye not? He asked a question. You got eyes. Can't you see? And then he went on, he went on to say, and having ears, you, you, you hear ye not? In other words, you got I, Look, look, first of all, when I made you, I gave you eyes. Can't you see what I've done? Uh, when, when I created you, when I made you, when you were born, I gave you ears. Uh, can't you hear? And do ye not remember? He said, now, I gave you a mind. I gave you a brain. Can't you remember what I've done? I fed 5,000. He said that even in verse 19, when I break the five loaves among 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said unto him, 12. And then he said, and when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. And he said, now how is it that you do not understand what Jesus can do? All right. See, Jesus is not just any shepherd. However, now, now, class, I want you to understand this. Our text for this lesson is going to be in 
the Gospel of John, as I have written up here on the board, John chapter 10. All right, and if you uh, pull up your Bible or pull it up on your cell phone, let's go to John chapter 10 right quick. And what, what I want to do, I want you to read along. I'm going to read this, and you read along with me as we read. I'm going to just read a few verses uh, to get a feeling, get a tone. You see, <clears throat> when you study the Bible, you need to get context, you need to get content, you need to get characters, uh, you need to get settings, you need to get a, 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 an emotional, a spiritual feeling, a, a understanding of what the, the subject is all about. Now, I, I, I'm hesitant to use the word feeling because we do too much feeling, and feeling is not what the Lord is expecting. Of us. The Lord said, ye shall know the truth. He never said, ye shall feel the truth because feeling can lead you astray. See, a lot of people feel they are right, but they are just as dead wrong as two left feet, okay? So you got to know the truth, and it will make you free. If you want to be free, you can't tell lies. you got to know the truth, comprehend the truth, speak the truth, live the truth. Don't be lying to people to get votes. Tell the truth. You know with all these guns in the United States of America that the more guns you have, the more risks and the more opportunities statistically that you're going to have gun violations. It's going to happen. That's why, you know, as, a, as a matter of fact, the United States, the average per, 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 per 100,000 people, there are 132,000 guns per 100,000 people in the United States. There is no other country in the world that has that many guns uh, per, per, per person as the United States of America. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. In fact, Jesus said, now, if, 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 if you are ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you. If you deny me, then I will deny you. Okay? Now, 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 let's, look at, let's look at the text now. <clears throat> let's look at the text right quick. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, beginning with verse number 1. All right, now, if you've got, a, you got a, a good Bible, it's red letters, and Jesus, he is speaking. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. In other words, there's, there, there's a proper access to get into the sheepfold. What Jesus really is saying, there's a proper access to get into the church. You can't just come into church because you feel good. You can't come into church because you accept Jesus as your personal savior. Jesus never said that. You can't come into church just how, however you want to or however some man tells you to. All right? You must come in there the way Jesus tells you to. As a matter of fact, when Jesus uh, put Noah in the ark, he told him how to get in the ark. He told him to put one door in the ark. In fact, God did not even allow Noah to close the door. God closed the door when they got in the ark. See, when you get in the church, the Lord closes the door. He opens the door and he closes the door. You, 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 don't, you don't pick your way of getting into the church. In fact, your baptism is what puts you into the church. First of all, the word. You got to be taught the word so you know why you're being baptized. Baptism puts you in contact with the blood. Baptism washes away your sins. Baptism removes the guilt of sin. Baptism where it allows you to bury your sin spiritually. And baptism is the access into the church that Jesus built. Now, you get into, now some other churches say, well, baptism is not necessary. That's what they say. All right? You, ha you have a choice. You, you know what? We, we all have a choice. Everybody has a choice. Every woman has a choice. Every man has a choice. We all have choices. No man can tell us what, my, what choice I take. But there is a consequence of the choice that I select. That's how, that's how the Lord functions. He gives us a choice. Good or evil. Big or small. Tall or short. Light or darkness. He gives us a choice. Which you choose. And when you make the choice, there is a consequence of your choice. You, 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 you spend your time smoking weed while you're young. You made that choice. But there is a consequence if you get old. 
Notice that's what I said now. If you get old, there is a consequence that you will pay for. If you don't study in school, there is a consequence when it comes to graduation time. You can make the choice. That's up to you. Don't let somebody else tell you what to choose, how to choose. You can choose the husband you want. You can choose the wife you want. You can make that choice. If you want an interracial marriage, nobody can tell you that you can't have what they call an interracial. The, the, the Lord made all of us. He made all of us. And the choice is yours. There's nobody outside of you can tell you what your choice is. Now, let's, let's, look at, let's look at what Jesus did here, what he said now. Verily I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Verse 2, but he that entereth in by the door, he didn't say a door, he said the door. He, the Jesus is known to use definite articles. He doesn't leave it open for guessing. He said, I am the way, the truth. The life. He didn't say I am a way, a truth, and a life, but I am the. He used definite articles, okay? He said, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Look at verse number three. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. See, the Lord gives everybody that comes into his fold a name. What's the name? What's the name? No man-made name. What is the name? Christian. You are a New Testament Christian. See, a lot of people call themselves Christians, but they're not New Testament Christians. How do you know that, Brother Atwater? Well, I know that because of their behavior, how they worship, what they do when they go into their sanctuaries. If they don't do what the Lord says, then they are not under the name of Jesus. All right? Then he says, they, he, uh, he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Look at verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep do what? They follow him. You don't wander off into your own thing. You follow Jesus, and they know his voice. And verse 5, and a stranger will they not follow. In other words, they know Jesus. See, a lot of people go to a, a house of worship, and they really don't even know Jesus. They talk Jesus, but they don't know him. They, they, they sing about Jesus, but they don't know him. They pray about Jesus, they don't know him. And as a matter of fact, you don't need to pray about Jesus. You ought to be praying to Jesus on your own behalf that you get to know who he really is. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. All right? I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to pick up some more in that particular text. But let, let me share this with you. The term sheep is a frequent metaphor throughout Scripture. You notice what I said, a metaphor. The term sheep. Uh, is a, a figurative ex, uh, term used to describe those who obey, those who are believers, those who obey, those who practice the commands, the teachings, and the examples of Jesus. Notice what I said. See, everything that you, that you, that you learn from Jesus and that you learn from God is not nece necessarily by Words, a lot of it is by inferences. Some of it is by commands. And then some of it is by example. Okay? So just keep that in mind. All right. So sheep is a word that is used. As a matter of fact, if you have your Bibles quickly back in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, let's go back to the first book of the Bible. In Genesis, and I believe it's chapter 4, uh, every now and then I like to go back to the beginning. Uh, see, the Old Testament really is the beginning of things. It's not, the Old Testament wasn't written for our salvation. The Old Testament was written to bring salvation to us. The Old Testament is the school bus 
to take you to school. When you get to Jesus, that's the teacher, okay? You don't get to Jesus until uh, the, the New Testament, and actually you don't get to Jesus uh, until the cross. And when he shed his blood, then he is, he, he, he is, he is the real, he is the authorized authority in heaven and in earth. He is the teacher. And as a matter of fact, you can't even get to God the Father without Jesus. All right, in Genesis chapter 4, look at verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 4 and verses uh, 1 and 2. Here, here it says in the very beginning of the book, this is dealing with Cain and Abel. The Bible says, and Adam knew Eve his wife. Now that word knew Eve his wife doesn't mean he got, began to get to know her and knew her name and all of a sudden they had sex. Knew means that they, they had sex. That's what it means. He had a relationship with his wife, Eve. Adam had sex with Eve, his wife. Who had sex? The husband and the wife. Who had sex? The husband and the wife. Who had sex? The husband and the wife. Not the boyfriend and the girlfriend. Who? The husband and the wife. Got that class? And she what? Conceived. And did what? Bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. All right? When you do it that way, when the, when the husband and the wife know each other, you have children from the Lord. Now, let me, let me, let me correct something. There is no law where the Lord has not decreed a law. Some laws the Lord did not give until later on down the stream of time. All right? See, Jesus came because God the Father knew that anything that we as human beings and mankind touch, we mess it up. We, we, we messed up the family. We messed up the church. We messed up the school. We mess up the government. We mess up our health. We mess up our children. We mess up the animal kingdom. We mess up the environment. Everything we touch, we mess up. All right? That's why Jesus was sent to give us a chance at the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? He, he, he is the shepherd. He's not any shepherd. But he's sent to clean up the mess and turn it into the best so that God the Father would be pleased. All right? Look at verse number 2 of Genesis 4. And she again bare his brother Abel. So she had two boys. She had Cain and then she had Abel. And Abel was what? There we go a keeper of sheep, all right? So there's that word sheep physically, sheep, all right? So Abel was a sheep herder, all right? That's the first time you see the word sheep in the Bible. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel brought of the firstling of his flock. And the Lord had respect unto Abel's offering. What that is telling us is the Lord wanted a blood sacrifice in, the, in their worship and not the fruit of the field. But Cain offered the best of his fruit. Abel offered a lamb, a blood sacrifice. Now, Cain got angry. But you know what? You know what? He didn't get angry at God. You know, that, that's why I say what we need now in the United States is more God than guns. Because, see, people can't get angry at God. Now, they can get angry over guns, but they won't get angry at God. Notice Cain. Cain didn't get angry at, uh, at, at God because God was the one that gave the command. But Cain got, a, got angry at his brother Abel. As a matter of fact, he killed Abel. 
That, that, you know, see, a lot of times, because we don't like somebody, then, you know, we get hate in us. That's why that young man up in Buffalo went in there and killed black folk because he hates black folk, all right? He hates people that are not like him, all right? Now, I, I have some news for you. Black folk don't hate white folk. Let me, let me, let me really, I want to be clear for this, for this class. Black folk don't hate white folk. As a matter of fact, black folk just want justice. Black folk picked cotton and made this country what it is. Listen to me, class. The Indians shared the idea of corn. Black folks handled the idea of cotton and made this country. White folk came over from Europe and took advantage of that and brought black folk to this country. All right? So we didn't ask to come. We were brought here against our desire. But we, we showed up. Now that we're here, you got to accept the fact that we're here. All right? Now, let, let, let's go, let's go a little bit, little, bit, little, bit, little further here now. You have sheep. Now, when you get sheep, when you get more than one, you get a flock. All right? A flock. That, that's a multiplicity of sheep. All right. In the Old Testament, again, uh, if, if you have your, uh, you, you got your Bible. So we're not in the Bible class with me if you don't have your Bible, okay? In Psalms, the 80th uh, chapter of Psalms and verse number one, I love this particular verse as, as, as the psalmist shares this thought with us, a call to God for help. He says, give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Notice the term shepherd. All right, because a shepherd leads, guides, protects, and provides for the sheep. Remember what I said now, sheep is a metaphor. Flock is a metaphor. Shepherd is that person who, who protects and guides and feeds and supplies the needs of the sheep. He said, now, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock. Now, there he, he, the, the psalmist brings in Joseph because Joseph was a blessed patriarch coming out of the tribe of Jacob, coming out of Jacob. Joseph was blessed. He made Pharaoh rich down in Egypt. Egypt caused God's people to be blessed. Egypt, by the way, is in Africa. I just thought I'd drop that. While I, see, a lot of times in that's why they're banning a lot of books. Let's stop banning books and let's really get down and get to know history. Black folk need to know history. White folk need to know history. Indians need to know history. Chinese need to, we all need to know our history in order to be able to deal with our present. So you can't deal with the present if you're ignorant of the past. Uh, as a matter of fact, we need to know. Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday today and forever. That's the shepherd. He's not any shepherd. He's a special kind of shepherd. I'll be to that in just a moment. So he goes on to say, uh, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock. That's a multiplicity of sheep. Thou that dwellest between the cherubims. Yeah, you see, the, the, if you remember in the Ark of Covenant, there was the cherubims and the there was the mercy seat and God would come down and commune with the high priest who really the high priest is a subordinate of God and God would communicate with the high priest and the high priest then would communicate with the people uh, with the sheep all right between the cherubims shine forth so there's that term shepherd in the Old Testament. Now, let's see if we can get that term shepherd again in the New Testament. Well, turn with me to the book of Acts for just a moment. Let's go to the book of Acts. I, I, and the reason I picked the book of Acts chapter 20 is I wanted to pick a time after the cross, after Christ had died and after Christ had gone back to heaven. Let's see uh, what, see if that those terms of sheep and shepherd still ring true. All right, in the 20th chapter of Acts, 
All right, I'm giving you time to get over there. Let's go to just two verses now in verses 28 and 29. Now watch the Apostle Paul, what he does is he calls a meeting with some men, special men, not just any men. He called the elders of Ephesus. In the church of Christ at Ephesus, he called in not all the brethren, but the elders. The elders, all right? Now watch what he said in verse uh, number 28. He says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. In other words, those who have been baptized and added to the church, they make up the flock. And as a matter of fact, the elders are overseers of the flock. So that makes them shepherds. They are earthly shepherds over the flock, guided by the word, okay? Christ is the word. He communicates the word. He is the word. He imbibes the word. He lives the word. He, the word is everything Jesus is. And when you have the word as a shepherd, you then share it with the sheep. Now watch what, 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 what the Apostle Paul says to these elders when he called them into the meeting. He said, now take heed, therefore, now you said, take heed, now fellows. Take, now Paul, now why is Paul able to do this? Because Paul is an apostle. The apostle was a special chosen vessel inspired by a baptismal measure of the Holy Spirit. An apostle could, would, had the, the capability of performing miraculous acts, not for show and tell, but in order to confirm the word. So, so some people would, so no one would say they are impostors or they're pretending they could perform miracles to confirm the word. Okay? Now, let's finish this text. In verse 28, he says, Now, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. So you can't become an overseer just because you feel like it, or because you think you know so much, or because you got so much money, or because you got power, or so forth, or the people like you or love you. No, 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 no. It takes the Holy Spirit. That's the, and that is tied to the Word. How do you know that? What Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. If you want to get the Holy Spirit, you got to go to the Word. All right. Now notice, notice what it says in the text. Now, the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Do what now, uh, shepherds or elders? What should you do? Feed the church of God, which He hath purchased with His own blood. Now, notice something. That God there is a capital G, and that God there is referring to Jesus, because Jesus is the one that shed His blood. In in the Godhead, there are three gods. There's God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, all right? God the Son is the only one that shed his blood, okay? Remember now, we open up with Genesis chapter 4 where God asked for a blood sacrifice. God wanted something to shed blood, all right? So, but now Jesus also shed blood. And when you, now the, the thing we have to understand is we must be covered by the blood of the, uh, 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 of the shepherd when we are covered by the blood via baptism and the word then God can take a look at us All right, God doesn't want to look at anything that's sin God can't stand sin that's why he kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden because they sinned alright now let's finish up this, this verse in, in verse number 28, in verse 29, uh, Paul said, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves, you know, wolves like sheep. Now, the wolves here is a metaphor for Satan. The devil is going to come in. He said, Now, grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And also of your own selves shall men arise. In other words, among you elders, you shepherds, you're going to have evil that rises among you. That's why you got to always watch leadership. Now look, now look, look at our nation right now. Let's look at the leadership of our nation right now. We, we, we got about 50 senators sitting there in the, in the Senate, and they won't pass any kind of meaningful 
uh, law on guns in the United States of America. You got 300 million people uh, tied up because of 50 hard-headed, mean-spirited, uh, hateful, hostile men wanting power and money. 50 people holding up. See, 90% of the people want control of guns. They, they want this thing. They want this thing. Stop. We're tired of seeing our people massacred in shopping centers in houses of worship in uh, schools and on the streets and in the, at the bus stop, no matter where it is, because we have a proliferation of guns, all right? So that's a New Testament text showing the uh, metaphor of the sheep, the flock, and the shepherds. Now, of course, the leader of the flock, another term that was used, not only shepherd, but pastor. A pastor is a shepherd. Really, a pastor is different than a minister. A minister delivers the word. He, a, a minister, in fact, Paul shared with us what a minister does. A minister's job is to reprove and to rebuke and to exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. You can pick that up in in Second Timothy chapter four. All right. Now, in, in terms of uh, of, 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 of the pastor the leader of the flock is the pastor or the shepherd alright in Israel as I read in Psalms 80 they were known as uh, shepherds and they were faithful to the Lord see you can't be a shepherd of the Lord if you're not faithful to the Lord alright now there were also some unfaithful shepherds alright now what did these unfaithful shepherds do they would rob the sheep instead of feeding the sheep. In other words, there are some people that rob the church instead of feeding the church. Okay? That's what I said. Rob. Get what is not rightfully, what is not spiritually, uh, what is not honestly, what is not genuinely yours. There are some leaders that will rob the church. There are some leaders that drive the sheep rather than lead the sheep, all right? Tell them what to do, but don't show them how to do it. Jesus was one who would, if he told you how to do something, he would do it first himself. He'd get it done, all right? Uh, let, 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 let's, get a, let's get a couple of passages that might help us in this area. Let's turn, flip back to the, in the Old Testament for just a moment. Let's go back to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, Isaiah, and then Jeremiah. That, that's an old, and you, you notice I said the Old Testament was written for our learning. All right, in Jeremiah 23 and verses uh, 1 through 4. Let's, let's look at these, these verses. In 23 verses 1 through 4, uh, watch what it said. This is, this is the prophet Jeremiah. He's known as the weeping prophet. Here's what he said. He weeped over the sins of God's people, uh, over the sheep that were unruly. Now watch what he said. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy. See, there's some pastors, they, like I said, they rob. They're unfaithful to the Lord. Woe. Woe mean look out, look out, look out. Trouble is coming. Punishment is coming. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. So this is, this is the Lord communicating to Jeremiah, who is his messenger, his major prophet. All right. Therefore, saith the Lord, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not visited them Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. In other words, the very wrong you do, the Lord will visit upon you. You're going to pay, you're going to pay a price for this thing, okay? You, you've done some people wrong. The Lord has a way of letting you see what you did. And I firmly believe that in our nation right now, we are suffering as a conglomerate group the sins of the past. And until we accept the fact that what was done was done wrong 
and, and that we need to repent. We need to accept that fact and begin to do the right thing. The right thing is start working with the least of these, those who have been left out, the downtrodden. All right, now let's go back to this particular text. He says uh, in verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. Uh, uh, watch that now. Of all countries, whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. See, really here what Jeremiah is doing, he's taking a look. He's prophesying really about the coming of Jesus down the stream of time. Jesus is the one that's going to going to bring people back together and we all become one in Christ. There's no such thing as white supremacy and there's no such thing as black supremacy. You know, there's, 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 you know, no, no human being is supreme over somebody else because of the color of their skin or because of their culture. All right? The only, th the only thing that we have to do is to be one in Christ Jesus. All right? He says now, and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And in verse 4, let's get one more verse. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. You remember that? Paul called in the shepherds over there in Acts chapter 20. All right, we just read that a moment ago. I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. And then he goes on to say, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king. There it is. That's Jesus. Who's the branch? Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah, which is David, and he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords uh, to execute judgment and his word on the earth. Okay? All right. Now, let's, let's, let's for a moment. When you get a chance, you might read Isaiah 56, verses 9 through 12, and, and get that. Uh, I just want to mention that as we are passing through. Now, let's, let, let's, let's quickly go back to our uh, basic fundamental text in John chapter 10. All right? In John chapter 10, uh, let's talk about Jesus. Now, I, 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 my subject is, for this class and this lesson, Jesus is not any shepherd. He's not any shepherd. Okay. Now, look at verse number 7. In John chapter 10 and verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So in other words, Jesus is saying, if, if, if you want to be, if you want to become a, one of my sheep, you, you got to come through the door. Okay, you got to, you know, I, and who is the door? I'm the door. I tell you how to get in. I, I tell you what the access rules are. You, you may be smart, you may be intelligent, maybe you've gone to seminary, uh, you, you've read a lot of books, you have a lot of philosophy and opinion, and you are very intelligent in the king's English, etc. Uh, may, may, maybe you know the Pythagorean theorem, you know all the uh, periodic charts and all the uh, chemicals, etc., et et and the elements on the periodical chart. You may, maybe you're well aware, maybe you know all the words in the dictionary. You can quote the dictionary, but that doesn't make you the door. Jesus is the door. All right? Now, look what he said. Let's look at verse number 8. In verse number 8, he said, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. In other words, if Jesus is the door, and if you come before Jesus and think you, think you got something, think you're saved, you are a thief and a robber. Then he goes on to say, But the sheep did not hear them. The sheep doesn't hear a shepherd that gets in the way he wants to get in by himself without Jesus. All right, then he goes on to say, then Jesus goes on to say, and he says again in verse number nine, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. In other words, if you do what I tell you to do, you'll be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. All right, now look at verse number 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, Lord have mercy, and that they might have it how? Not just exist, but have it more abundantly. Okay? So Jesus now, all right, what is he? Look at verse 11. What, is, what kind of shepherd is he? He's not any shepherd, but look, what does Jesus say he is? He says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. I'm not a shepherd. I'm not any shepherd. I'm not an imposter shepherd. 
but I'm a good shepherd. Giveth his life for his sheep. In other words, I give my life for my sheep. A wolf come in here, wolf's going to deal with me. When Satan comes into the church, I will deal with satanic intervention because there's many times the sheep can't see the devil. But I see him. I see that rascal. I know where he is. I can deal with him. As soon as I, uh, as soon as I was uh, uh, started my ministry and I went into the wilderness, the devil showed up and I dealt with that rascal. And how did I deal with him? I dealt with him by the word. I spoke the word. He tried to tempt me and I passed my final exam in, 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 in dealing with Satan. And of course, my real final exam was my dissertation was the cross Satan tried to lock me in the tomb but he couldn't lock me in the tomb I rose from the tomb the stone was rolled back I came out and nobody will touch me again because now I have all authority in heaven and in earth I am the real shepherd I am the good shepherd the United States of America needs the good shepherd for New Testament Christians. Needs the new shepherd. Need, needs the good shepherd. Okay, now let's focus on the good shepherd for just a moment, and then the lesson will be yours. All right? Let's look at, I'm going to give you quickly about four things that the good shepherd does for us. Number one, he died for us. A good shepherd will die. Now, a good shepherd doesn't ask his sheep to die. He dies for us. All right? Right there in John chapter 10, look at verse number 15. It says, as the Father knoweth me, that's what Jesus said, that's God, that's God the Father, knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life, what? For the sheep. Look at verse 17, in verse number 17. Therefore doth my Father love me, because why? I lay down my life that I might take it again. All right? See, that, that, that's what you call authority. That's authority. L l let, me, let me put it to you this way. All right? Now, l let me show you the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament class. Watch this. In the Old Testament, the sheep, watch this now. L listen closely now. Don't, don't miss this. Th this is important. In the Old Testament, the sheep died on the altar. You got that? That's in the Old Testament. The sheep died. That, that, that's why I'm so glad that I don't have to uh, live by the Old Testament because I don't want to die on the altar. All right? Now let's go to the New Testament. In the New Testament, the shepherd died on the cross for the sheep. You got me? Look, look, look. See, look, now watch this. Let's, let, me, let me say it again now. In the Old Testament, the sheep died on the altar. In the New Testament, the shepherd died on the cross for the sheep. Now, now, which, which, now, now which law is better? You, you know the New Testament is better. Goodness gracious. In, in John chapter 10 and, 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 and verse number, let's drop down to verse number 28. He said, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, I, I, I like that secure. That's why the United States needs the New Testament Jesus. Not this talking Jesus that we all walk around, a lot of people walk around and talk about Jesus. We need, I, you know, personally, some people ask me, well, I want to, you know, you know what, what is your religion? I'm a New Testament Christian. I'm working to be one. That's the guy. That's the principle. A New Testament Christian. Not just a Christian that I can do what I want to, when I want to, and act and hate folk, have a racial problem don't need the church. The church is the body of Christ. That's the pastor. When you uh, have been baptized, you then are eligible with the right teaching 
to go out into the pasture. All right? So Jesus died for us. All right, let's go to number two now, class. You ready for number two? All right. Jesus lives for us. All right? Let, 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 me, let me, for the sake of time, let, 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 let's, uh, let, let's pluck one. Let's go to Hebrews right quick. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews is just a great book uh, dealing with how that the New Testament is a better covenant. All right? Let's go to the 13th chapter of Hebrews. In the 13th chapter of Hebrews, and beginning with verse number 20 and uh, 21. Uh, in verse 20 it says, now, now Paul is the writer of Hebrews, the apparent writer. But it says, now, now the God of peace brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, uh, that great shepherd of the sheep through blood of the everlasting covenant. Now watch this. The New Testament is an everlasting covenant or agreement. The Old Testament was a temporary covenant. It was a shadow of good things to come. But the New Testament is uh, sealed by the blood of Jesus spiritually. Verse 21, what does it do for you? It'll make you perfect in every good work to do his will. In other words, that word perfect means it'll make you complete and mature in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through whom? Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. And right in the middle of the chapter, uh, Paul writes, Amen. Amen. You see, you have to, after a verse like that, you have to say, Amen. Okay? All right. Now, let, let, let me give you one other passage in, in Hebrews. Since we're in Hebrews, go back to chapter 4. Chapter uh, 4 in Hebrews, and let, let's, let's begin with verse number 14. See, Christ is really the way to God. You, you cannot get to God the Father without Christ, okay? That's why, see, the Old Testament will not save you because Christ did not come in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was, like I said, it was the highway to Christ. It was the school bus to take you to Christ. All right, now, in, in Hebrews chapter 4, picking up with verse number 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest. Now that's something else about Christ. He's not only the good shepherd, but he's a high priest. Not What kind of high priest? A great high priest. Not just a high priest, okay? A great high priest. All right? That is passed where? Into the heavens. All right? Where, where is Christ at? In heaven. Uh, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. What's our profession? We profess that Christ is our Savior and that we have been added to his body, his church, and we are sheep in his sheepfold, and he is the shepherd that is heavenly and in heaven. All right? Look at verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. In other words, when I'm sick, in uh, 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 other words, Jesus never gets sick. So how would you like to have a high priest that doesn't get sick? Now, back in the Old Testament, those high priests could get sick. They, they all died. Every one of them died. Now, Jesus died, but he rose again. Now, there's no high priest in the Old Testament that died and, 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 and came alive again. But Jesus died, and he came. That's why I have a, when, when I'm a New Testament Christian, I have a great high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted. Now, now, let me put it this way. Christ went through everything that we go through. He, he went through H-E-L-L -L on earth. The people killed him. They beat him. They lied on him. They mocked him. They made fun of him. They discredited him. And that's still going on today, okay? That's, that's still going on today. 
He was in all points tested or tempted like us. But yet, he had no sin. That's who I want to follow. See, because I have sin, I got to follow somebody that has no sin. Let, let me help you to see this. Ah, uh, when you uh, put your clothes in the washing machine to clean them, do you use dirty water or clean water? All right. Now, it would make sense to use clean water because the dirt comes out of the clothes into the clean water and then the clothes are left clean. Are you with me? That's why I need a high priest or a shepherd without sin. So that when my sin is forgiven, he takes on, he's clean, he can take on my sin. If he had sin, then he couldn't take on my sin because he's already loaded with sin. But when I sin, he can take on my sin. And he can do it for everybody because of his word and because of his sacrifice on the cross. Now watch this now. Well, Atwater, if he takes on your sin, he has sin, how can he take on Andre Sims' sin? Well, it is because his blood flows spiritually. See, when blood flows, it gets clean. Look at the blood in your body. Your body, your blood is constantly picking up garbage. And it goes through the filtration plant called the liver. And it's clean. And it's ultimately it is all of that is discharged from the body. So in other words, uh, the body has a cleaning process to get rid of the germs and the garbage that comes into the body. Let's go, let's go to the spiritual side. When I sin, my high priest can take on my sin, your sin, and everybody's sin because he has an eternal cleansing process. Lord, have mercy. Everybody got that? All right, class. Okay. All right. So Jesus does what now? All right, that, that, there's, there's about three or four things Jesus does. Number one, I'm, let me get this up here now. Uh, let, me, let me write this up here for you. So that, that in terms of uh, he lives for us, as he lives for us, as he lives for us, he leads the way. Write that down. He leads the way. Because he said, I am the way. So he leads. He, lead. he don't drive. He doesn't tell you, hey, well, you go ahead and make it down and just go, go on down, go south, then turn north, and then go back. You know, he leads the way. All right. What else does he do? Number two, he prepares the way. He prepares the way. All right. What else does Jesus do as he, as he lives for us? What does he do? He he protects us on the way. He protects us on the way. In other words, while you're traveling, he protects you. And what else does he do? Number four, while I'm going from earth to glory, he provides for me on the way. Now, 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 look, look, look what Jesus, look, look, what my, look what my shepherd does. What my shepherd does the New Testament Christian receives from Jesus. He leads my way. He prepares my way. He protects me on the way and he provides for me along the way. Why, why should I worry about stuff that a lot of people worry about? Because Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Okay? But now, how can I not, my heart not be troubled? I must abide by the shepherd. Alright? That's number two. Alright? Now let me give you number three. He speaks to us and he leads us. In other words, he speaks to us and he leads us. So that, that, that's why he, he, he is the good shepherd. All right? Uh, let, 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 let me uh, give you some, some, some details on that. Uh, to, to, for the benefit of genuine believers, 
Notice what I said. G-E-N-U-I-N-E, believers. Genuine belief. See, we got some people who talk believer, be, be, belief, but they, they, they really are not genuine. They're not serious about it. What, what, what does Jesus, how does, he, how does he speak for us and lead us? Well, number one, Jesus causes me, number one, to have an appetite. An appetite for his word. So you got to have an appetite for the word, okay? If you don't have an appetite for the word, forget everything else. There, there's nothing else. Some people say, well, I like the singing, okay? Well, singing is good, but you need the word. Well, some people say, well, I like to do benevolent. Okay, you need the word. Some people say, well, I like to visit the sick. You need the word. Some people say, I don't want to be baptized. Then you don't have, you, you know, you're disobeying the word, all right? He gives us an appetite for the word. Then, also, number two, what does he do? He gives me a desire to understand. In other words, I love it when I'm sitting in a class and people say, I don't understand, all right? Then we got, we got to help them to understand. And if I can't get an answer, I'm going to find the answer, but I got to find the answer in the Word. I'm not going to go to some kind of philosophy and opinion of somebody that, 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 that is not biblically based. I got to go to God. I've got to go to the Word of God, the Bible, and get the answer, all right? So he gives us the desire to understand, all right? Then number three, he gives us the will to obey. See, once, once you understand, then you've got to have the will, the drive, the motivation to obey, okay? And then he gives us another powerful tool. And I call that uh, discernment, D-E-S-R-N-M-E-N-T. Discernment to detect, to detect, uh, to detect uh, fake shepherds or false Shepherds. See, you, you, you got to be able to know when somebody's leading you astray. You know, people. You know, we got people now believe conspiracy theories. You know, they they believe everything that somebody says on on, on a social network. The, these kids that the kids in Buff, the kid in Buffalo and the kid down in Texas, listening to the social network, believing so they they don't have any discernment of false shepherds, okay, all right, so, 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 th th these are four things, and then five, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, a passage of scripture, number five, go with me to the, to the gospel of John, chapter 10, and verse 27, all right, let's go to John chapter 10, and verse number 27, and let, let, let's just quickly uh, read that together, in John chapter 10, <clears throat> all right, class, you with me, all right, now, I want you to also write this particular passage down, too. In the 10th chapter of John and verse 27, notice this. Uh, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. See, you know there are a lot of people that sit in a place of what they call worship or their religious sect. And they really don't know the voice of Jesus. Somebody can get up there and say, baptism is not essential to salvation. Now, somebody can get up there and say, you don't have to love your enemy. That's a false sheep. See, so you don't know the voice of Jesus. How do you know the voice of Jesus? By knowing his word. When you know his word, then the Holy Spirit gives you ready recall of what Jesus would have you to do. Because there are false believers in the world. Let me prove that to you. Jesus said something that might be of help to you in Matthew chapter uh, 7. Let's go to the 7th chapter of Matthew. And uh, look, look, at, uh, about, look at verse 21, 22, and 23. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, 22, and 23, as, 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 we, as we deal with that, uh, in, in terms of false believers. Notice what it says in verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
There are a whole lot of people saying, praise the Lord, 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 this, Lord, that, and Lord, that, and Lord, Lord, and the Lord God Almighty, and so forth. And I, I give you my thoughts and prayers. They say all of these spiritual sounding things. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that what? Doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. When you do, when you do the will, that's why the Lord helps us to uh, uh, have the will to obey and the discernment, discernment to detect false shepherds. When you obey the will, uh, then, then, then you got something going on. Now, let, let's go a little further. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, that's the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful work? We got a lot of wonderful working people. But then Jesus said, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Just because you do good works doesn't mean the work is approved by Jesus, the high priest of Christianity. Okay? All right? So that's the third thing. He is our guidance system. He speaks us to us and he leads us. Now, let me give you the fourth one. This will wrap up the lesson for today. He will eventually, he's going to come for us. All right? Look at, the, look at the four things that Jesus, the, the, the good shepherd does. He dies for us. He lives for us. He speaks and leads us, speaks for us and leads us. And finally, he's going to come for us. You got anybody on earth that's going to come for you? You know, some people won't even come when you're going to give them something real nice. They won't even come. All right? Let, 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 let's, get, let's, get a, let's get a few passages of scripture on this and then we'll close out this particular lesson. Let's go back to 1 Peter. Let's go back to Peter. Cursing, swearing Peter who became a great New Testament Christian before he died. In 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 4. Watch this. Uh, he says, and when the chief shepherd, now that, that, that's, that's what I like about Jesus. You notice, and even here it's got a capital S. You got a good Bible, that's a capital S. He's a chief shepherd shall appear. Ye shall do what? Receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. See, a lot of people get crowns, but they fade, they canker, they decay, they wear out, or they lose them, or what have you. But this is a crown from the chief shepherd that fadeth not away. All right? Let, 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 to, to edify you and to build you up, class, I want to give you another a couple more passages of Scripture that might be of exciting excitement to you. In Hebrews chapter 13, and look at verse number 17. Hebrews 13 and 17. Watch what, watch what he says. Watch what Paul says. Obey them that have the rule over you. That, that, that's that, 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 that's your, your, your minister and your shepherd. The minister has the word and the shepherd feeds you. Okay, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they do what? Watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with what? With joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. So in other words, the Lord has men to watch for your soul and it's your job to listen to them because they speak the word that the Lord provides. All right? Let's, let's get another passage of Scripture before we close. In the Gospel of John, chapter 9. Let's go to the John, chapter 9. Gospel of John, chapter 9. A beautiful passage here in the ninth chapter, verses 28 and 29. Uh, first of all, in 28, They that reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. Now watch what Jesus said. Now see, these are some people that are saying that uh, we, 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 you know, we, we like Moses. We like Moses. We like Moses. Because Moses got the Ten Commandments. Moses was great. He's the lawgiver and all that. But well, look what Jesus said. Look what Jesus said in verse 29. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. All right? So, in other words, they love Moses, but Christ is the one that gave Moses his authority. God gave Moses his authority. Christ was with God in the Old Testament. Christ did not come to the earth in the Old Testament, but he was with God in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All right? 
That's in John chapter 9, verses 28 and 29. Now drop down in that same chapter to verse number 34. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? This, 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 is, this is dealing with the case <clears throat> where Jesus healed a man that was born blind. Okay, And that they were making fun of a blind man. And then, of course, Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And Jesus goes on to say, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might see. See, we got a lot of blind folk in the United States of America. Impo intelligent in secular knowledge, but ignorant in spiritual knowledge. He said now that they which they see, they have eyes and they see not. And they which see might be made blind. Okay? But then Jesus kind of wraps it all up. He says, if ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see Therefore, your sin remains. What is Jesus saying here is? He's saying that a lot of people would be better off if they were blind because then they would have to rely on what they hear and comprehension. But sometimes, see, our eyes will play tricks on us. That's why Jesus said if your right eye offends you, you, may, you ought to pluck it out. He doesn't mean that literally, but you need, you need to deal with what you see. Let us close with an Old Testament passage. And I want to do this to enhance the class to let you know the Old Testament is written for our, as I said, our learning and our edification. Uh, let's, let's quickly go back to the book of Ezekiel. <clears throat> now, a moment ago, I had you in Jeremiah. Uh, but now, let, let, let's go back to uh, the book of Ezekiel. And I, and I believe what I want is uh, chapter 34, all right? Jeremiah, uh, Lamentations, and then, of course, there is the book of Ezekiel, all right? Now, let's get, let's get to verse 34 in, in the book of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 34. Ezekiel is, is quite a lengthy book. You remember Ezekiel saw the wheel. He's one of the major prophets of God. So in, in Ezekiel chapter 34, and uh, verse, uh, the Lord God, this is where he's dealing with the Lord God is a good shepherd. I'm going to read two or three verses in this as we wrap up. All right, you ready, class? Look at verse 15. This is where God tells Ezekiel, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord. So in other words, when the Lord feeds us, he's providing us with protection where we got comfort. Our nation doesn't have comfort now. We need comfort. There's comfort in the church, and the Lord feeds his flock. Look at verse 23. I will set up one shepherd over them. And you know who that one shepherd is? Ezekiel, back in the Old Testament, is saying, the Lord says, I will, that's in the future, set up one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Talking about Jesus. That Jesus is prophesied even in Ezekiel. Now, let's drop down to verse number 29. In verse number 29, he says, And I will raise up for them a plant of renown. In other words, I'm not going to raise up a plant that nobody knows what it is. They're going to know this plant. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. See, when, you, when you're ruled by heathens, you, 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 you go, you'll starve. You'll starve spiritually and even star, starve Physically, the thing I think about over there in Russia right now with what Putin is doing and messing with Ukraine and, and causing those people to be hungry when they, when they got more wheat than anybody else in the world and causing those people to because of a heathen guy wanting power. Now look at verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. Now watch the last verse we'll read, class, is verse 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Ye are the flock, and I am your God, and Christ is the great chief shepherd. May God bless you. Jesus is not any shepherd, 
but he is the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for every day that you give to us. We ask a special prayer at this time uh, for the, tr the trouble and the uh, tragedy that has happened in this blessed nation that you have allowed us to live in. Help us to get together with love and unity and realize that it's not, uh, not, not how I look and about my culture. It is about my Christianity, my New Testament Christianity and my respect for the Lord. And when I love the Lord, the Lord will love me and then I can love my brothers and my sisters. Forgive us for those things that we do that we, that we should have done. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you will not only bless the nation, but also bless the church, those that make up the New Testament Christianity, that they will do those things and let their light shine before men, that they might see their good works. These blessings we ask in thy most holy and precious name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, class, for being with us. Uh, check us out again at the next Bible class, and we'll certainly have a lesson ready for you.